All right, folks. Uh, we have some great news here for you about Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. It arrives in 12 days. Now, previews have been out for it for, I don't know, three, four days now. And I finally had a chance to go through some of them. But thankfully, while I was going through them, uh, I found this on Nintendo Everything. And this is a summary of some key details that you guys might be interested in because this does let you know how different the game is from a performance perspective from the original. Now, I need to point out here that this is also our last day to enter our giveaway. We are giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, and or a Nintendo Switch. Details on how to enter are in the description or down in the pinned comment. We will be having a live stream uh either late tonight or tomorrow uh, announcing the winner. Also, starting tomorrow, we will have our new giveaway kicked off, uh, so stay tuned for that. I think a lot of you fans are going to be really excited, especially if you love Switch, and especially if you happen to It's a Me, Mario. All right, let's get into uh, the details here. So, um, it says a few tidbits uh, are coming in concerning the performance of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Uh, so, by all accounts... The game brought over from Wii U runs at 60 frames per second. Uh, that seems to be the general consensus from all of the previews. Uh, but in Bowser's Fury, it's different. So what we learn here is that in Bowser's Fury, when you are playing in handheld mode, it runs at 30 FPS. When you're playing docked, it runs at 60. Also, resolution-wise, the main game runs at 1080p uh, on docked mode, but 720p in handheld mode. Uh, Whereas the measured resolutions on every preview I have seen, including Nintendo Everything here, who went through some previews as well, seems to indicate that Bowser's Fury, regardless of docked or handheld, runs at 720p. Now, obviously in handheld, it can't run higher than 720p, but it seems to be running at 720p across the board in that mode. Now, there's actually some more interesting things I discovered from some of these previews. And one of those is something that isn't talked about enough. So, the original Super Mario 3D World ran on a 8-axis movement set. So, this basically means there are 8 directions when you move your control stick around that actually register the character movement in the game. Now, for many players, this can still feel like a completely open and free-roaming control scheme because 8 directions is quite a bit more than 4 back in the day when you used to be able to just go up, down, left, right. This lets you go diagonally. So it does seem to some uninitiated gamers that you have full free motion, but you actually don't. And this is really noticeable uh, when you're specifically trying to maybe line your character up just right at a specific point and you can't quite seem to do it uh, perfectly. This is because you do not have a free range of motion. So that still exists in Super Mario 3D World. They did not you know, take the original eight directions and make it completely free and open, despite the fact they did speed up your movement speed in the game and made the game just a bit snappier and just a bit quicker uh, to function better. Now, what they did do in Bowser's Fury mode, and I find this to be wholly interesting, is it's completely free and open. It's free movement. So, you have the ability to freely move in any direction you want. There is, it's not locked to eight directions. It, it, it's a completely free, normal, open world movement. I find this to be interesting because it suggests to me that Bowser's Fury is actually made from the ground up. Uh, while they might be using maybe some art assets, all the code and everything in it is completely new. Now, maybe that's not surprising because it's a completely new mode, and it's unlike anything we have previously really gotten in a Mario game. Uh, we also discovered that the length of Bowser's Fury is right around what I initially thought it would be. So a lot of uh, the previews are saying, hey, if you just want to beat the mode, not 100% it, it'll take you from two to three hours, which is what I originally said that Bowser's Fury was actually probably pretty short. Uh, and it is. But they said if you want to 100% it, there's a lot more collectibles, all that jazz. It can end up taking you you know, closer to five hours, which, again, is about twice as long. That's, that's pretty 
typical, right? When, you know, you, you can rush and beat certain games in a certain time, but you want to 100%. It usually is at least twice as long. Some games are three, four, five times as long to 100%, depending on which game we're talking about. You know, when you look at some of those massive RPGs out there, like The Witcher, uh, you know, Skyrim, any of those games, yeah, you could beat the main story pretty, you know, I guess relatively quickly. It still takes a bit, uh, but to 100% could take, you know, thousands of hours. Breath of the Wild is an example I mean, there's speedruns having that bad boy, you know, done in like an hour. I don't even know. It's less than an hour. It's crazy. So let's let's look at uh, just some beautiful footage as you're sitting here uh, enjoying some of this. What I what I took away from the previews as well that Nintendo Everything didn't point out here is that Bowser's Fury mode, if it was its own game, if it, if you separated it out from Super Mario 3D World. And it was its own game, and let's say it was you know a five dollar offering, a ten dollar offering, right? Just a standalone game. It seems like almost every single person who previewed it would give it a ten out of ten. That's the interesting part here, because there's going to be always a debate when you bring over a game that was a Wii U port. We've had these debates in the past over is it worth sixty dollars? Is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition worth sixty dollars? People will say yes, revamped graphics, and look, they added a whole new you know story mode that kind of leads it in to Xenoblade Chronicles two. Okay, you sure? All right. Uh, what about other games that were more straight? forward ports like Tokyo Mirage Sessions right that game was ported over and is pretty close to just a straight port what about Pikmin 3 Deluxe they added some Olimar levels but otherwise it's pretty much the exact same game is it really worth 60 bucks when you port it over and this really came ahead you know when you were talking about Super Mario 3D All-Stars what like are these games that Nintendo packaged together and are just using emulators and HD in them through that uh, so it's really simple to do. Is that worth sixty bucks? I mean, we proved it with sales figures that to enough people it was worth sixty bucks. But this is always the debate with these Wii U games. So when you look at Super Mario 3D World, which pretty much plays and looks a lot like the original, except it's snappier and quicker, is it enough? Is Bowser's Fury Mode enough? Well, when all of the previews out there, despite how short it is, are telling you, hey, this is like amazing this is perfect this is exhilarating this is exciting this is mario as we've never seen it we want to see something like this added in future mario games like this you know th there was a couple previews i remember that said this experience because you know for how short it is you can basically call it an experience with bowser's fury is the best mario has been ever i've seen that stated by three to four different people who have played it it makes me consider the fact that Nintendo did something brilliant here. And while I don't know that you know two to five hours of gameplay is worth sixty dollars, I think when you package in uh, you know a a game that I don't think very many people got to play. Again, very very few people owned a Wii U. I did actually. It was kind of quite funny because so I was playing. Ring Fit Adventure yesterday. Yes, folks, I have Ring Fit Adventure. I'm sure you guys know by now if you follow any of my social channels. Uh, and I was doing my day one of it yesterday. By the way, highly surprised at uh, how effective Ring Fit Adventure is as a workout. I I was pretty skeptical right up until we started going. And then, oh boy, it's quite a thing. I have it set to extreme. So I'm extremely overweight, so I need the extreme workout. Uh, so as I was doing that... Uh, my uh, fiance was like, hey, you know, we should get We Fit or We Fit You. Now, she literally said We Fit You. Keep in mind that my fiance is not what I would consider to be a gamer. Um, maybe super casual. She'll play some Candy Crush on her phone uh, or maybe some of those, you know, fake casino games on her phone. She'll also, you know, she, she enjoys Mario a bit, but not really like a super active gamer or anything. Uh, she played a lot of Animal Crossing last year, but uh, that's kind of an outlier. She she typically doesn't play stuff that often. But here's the thing: she was talking about the the Wii Fit U, and I told I explained to her that it's hard to get you know balance boards that you know aren't broken because they don't make them brand new anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean I can totally go get it. I can get a you know a Wii U and a and, and Wii Fit U. Well, here's the thing. As much as it'd be great to get it, I've had. I think it might actually make for a really cool video. Um, but 
Maybe I'll do it just for that sake. Uh, she said something I never thought I would hear come out of her mo- mouth. And this is maybe the only person who isn't a traditional gamer that would say this. She stated, and I quote, Man, I really loved Wii U. So, a little background there. Wii U is a system that we owned back in our little tiny two-bedroom apartment when we only had one kid. And we played it a lot. Uh, we played uh, New Super Mario Brothers. You, we played that. We beat it together. Uh, we played Super Mario 3D World. We played it, and we 100%ed, not just beat it, 100%ed that game together. She played Pikmin 3 and fell in love with Pikmin on that system. She gamed more on Wii U than she's probably gamed in her entire life. So she has a lot of fond memories of that Wii U system. Uh, so it's interesting seeing her bring it up. And she doesn't even know this game's coming. She doesn't even know the Super Mario 3D World's coming back. So, uh, I mean, I'm just saying, maybe there's a stream coming down the line where uh, me and the old fiancé go and kick some Mario butt. We'll see. That being said... Hopefully you guys enjoy this video, uh, learn something new, uh, or at least help solidify some opinions or purchasing decisions for you here. Uh, you know, we'll put a Amazon affiliate link down in the description if you haven't pre-ordered yet and you would like to pre-order. I don't think this is going to be one of those games that's hard to get. It's not like the actual consoles, which, while it's relatively easy to get a Switch online right now, it's not necessarily easy to get them in stores. Uh, I've been to several stores lately, and it's really hard to get any system, PlayStation 4, Xbox One included. Um, this pandemic is hitting everything pretty hard, let me tell you. So thank you guys for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. If you didn't, hey, why the hell are you still here this late in the video? I'll catch you guys in the next one.